Hi there and uh, welcome to the third and most likely the final update uh, just in relation to uh, my solar energy diverter. Um, I've posted two previous videos that have showed what have gone through the evolution of this device. Um, so I'm not going to recap too much on that. That information's out there and the Arduino scripts and this uses Arduino to control um, the diversion activities. Uh, that's already available uh, online. The main uh, difference here is that uh, I've changed the uh, approach in relation to hot water power diversion. So in my previous update, I'd moved to pulse switch modulation using a uh, solid state relay, uh, just basically to switch on and switch off to uh, control uh, the heating of the hot water based on the amount of power that was available. So if I take you through an example there, say we've got a four kilowatt element in the hot water service and say the system sees that I'm exporting two kilowatts to the grid, then for the cycle time that I set, maybe five seconds, for two and a half seconds of that five second interval, uh, the unit will be switched on. And then for the other two and a half section, uh, seconds, it will be switched off. So during the two and a half seconds it's switched on, you're essentially using two kilowatts of solar, two kilowatts from the grid, and then when it's switched off, you're feeding uh, two kilowatts uh, back to the grid. So over that time period, your kilowatt hour figure would basically be zero. And that system worked really good for many years. Um, and you could see it in the charts that I was getting from my utility supplier. I was very much effectively using what power I had. The issue with that uh, approach, however, is that obviously when you're using a solid state relay, when you're switching that relay on, you're dragging the full amount of power into that hot water service. So in that last example, four kilowatt hours, I can't, or four kilowatts, sorry, I can't uh, control the amount of power I'm passing into the hot water service. So essentially what I am doing, particularly in overcast weather days, is that I'm actually having to draw from the grid during those on cycles and then feed back into the grid during the off cycles. And um, whilst that does work from a, a netting out of a, from a kilowatt hour perspective, you are paying more from the grid uh, for the power you draw from the grid, which here in, in Melbourne is between 26 and 28 cents a kilowatt hour compared to uh, your export uh, 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 feed-in tariffs that you're getting, which is anywhere between three and a half to maybe six cents a kilowatt hour. So, uh, I had one question asked from one of the uh, one of the viewers of the video. It said, "Well, look, can we avoid having to actually draw power from the grid when we're switching on the hot water service?" And the answer is yes, um, and that's done through a pro uh, approach called phase angle control or phase fired control. Um, so this iteration of the diverter uh, has been upgraded to uh, use a commercially available phase angle controller um, to then uh, switch on the hot water service. So in that previous, previous example, we've got a four kilowatt element in the hot water service, two kilowatts exporting to the grid. I can actually just divert two kilowatts to the hot water service. So I can actually control the amount of power. Uh, going to the hot water service. There are plenty of videos online to explain uh, phase angle or phase fired control. I won't get into that, but essentially as the AC waveform passes at various angles, 0, 90, 180, uh, 270, 360 degrees, you can actually see that uh, zero crossover point and then switch on that device at a certain point in time to limit the actual amount of voltage or power that you're delivering to the grid. Uh, sorry, delivering to the device. And so um, it's a very clever system. You can only use this approach, though, for resistive elements, such as resistive element hot water services. You can't use this approach for an air conditioner or a heat pump uh, hot water service or for charging electric vehicles. No, the, for those, they've got to be either switched fully on or fully off, um, and hopefully not at high frequency in any case. Um, but for hot water, phase angle control is perfectly good for that. Um, I looked around at um, how I was going to approach this and I started looking at uh, phase angle controllers. I went straight to AliExpress in this case, rightly or wrongly, 
and there are a whole range of devices that are out there. Uh, generally, uh, you can buy them for DC or AC, uh, sorry, for, for AC controls for certain voltages, and they basically use a DC input voltage to control the amount of power on the output. Uh, many of them quote that they're fairly linear, so for example, uh, some require a 0 to 10 volt input to control the output from 0 to 100%. Uh, some require a 0 to 5 volt input, again controlling the output from 0 to 100%. Um, I've tried to do this on the quick and dirty and, uh, and try to use a lazy approach, but sure enough it has worked, which is great. So I was looking for controllers, for example, controllers that could work from a 0 to 5 volt supply. Um, there are a whole variety out there, but I was able to find one, believe it or not, that had exactly the same form factor as the um, solid state relays. So in this case, where I already had the enclosure and everything, I didn't want to put too much work into this, I actually found one with exactly the same form factor. So I could very easily incorporate that physically into the box. The next step was to test the linearity of the device. That is, for example, at zero uh, volts input is at zero, and then at five volts is at 100%, and say at two and a half volts is it at 50%. Um, uh, power or switch on or power transfer. Um, so what I did there is make a simple rig. I mounted the phase angle controller to a heat sink and drove it with a variable power supply. And I increased the uh, power supply upwards in, in increments of 0.2 volts. Uh, depends on how granular you would like this, but you could do it at 0.1 volt. You could do it at even less than that if you had the time just to measure how much tra power transference there was through to the load. And I tried a, a variety of different um, resistive loads to get some sort of approximation. Uh, the good news is, is that the device that I've used here is r roughly linear, but it's not linear uh, to the approach that I could uh, basically uh, make it a formulaic control. Um, it was a bit, uh, they had peaks and troughs and it wasn't quite uh, quite perfect. In fact, I might, uh, in the attachments, put a chart there of, of, the, um, of the linearity of the device. In reality, they don't switch on at just after zero. They need, you know, one point something volts to switch on. And they, uh, this particular device maxes out at 4.8 volts or something as well. So the first part is to, to map that linearity and get a data table of um, the results for your specific device. Um, the, um, the second part of that is um, looking at how we, uh, how we map that into Arduino code. And there is a great um, a library called Multimap, um, which is wonderful. So essentially you put your values in there i.e. your DC input voltages versus your uh, switch on percentages. Um, and that table can be as big or small as you would like. And then when you look up that table, say for example, um, in that previous example, I wanted to um, transfer 100% of the, um, um, or sorry, in that previous example where I was uh, um, exporting two kilowatts and my element was four kilowatts, I'd basically want to switch on the device 50%. Okay, so I would then, using Multimap, look up roughly where that 50% point was, and that will output the voltage that needs to be fed into the phase angle controller. It's all in the Arduino code, so have a look at it, um, but it actually works um, very well. There is one thing that I've also done a bit of a dodgy on here that you probably need to be aware of, is that uh, generally um, the phase angle controllers need to be driven from a, a DC power source um, or an analog power source. In pure forms, the Arduino and the Nano here, that doesn't put out a analog DC voltage. So if you, you, you there's no facility to do that. You've got to use um, a pulse width modulation pins on the device uh, with some sort of filtering on those pins to roughly give you a, um, a DC equivalent voltage. Um, now, I tested um, the uh, pulse width uh, uh, phase angle controller with output directly from the Arduino. I wasn't able to filter it. 
uh, you'll find, well, the device I have here, and I haven't measured this and I do apologize, uh, but it does have uh, a relatively long input resistance and it does have capacitance across it as well. I'd probably need to do the, the, the correct measurements and, and run it through a crow to just see what was going on. But um, I have been able to drive this directly from the output of the Arduino uh, pulse width modulation pins, um, just without getting too technical. There are three uh, timers in uh, the Arduino Nano. Uh, the controls, I think, uh, two pins of the six available pulse width, pulse width modulation pins to try to um, get a st strong enough output from the Arduino. I've actually paired two of those pins together. I think they're pins 9 and 10. Uh, I don't think it actually will make a great difference. That basically feeds directly into the phase angle controller. Uh, I did put some capacitance across the input of that, uh, but it seems to work perfectly well. So I think the residual capacitance and resistance in the device is sufficient to provide enough smoothing on that um, pulse width modulated output from the Arduino to make it work. Uh, this system has been running now for oh, well over six months um, and has worked basically faultlessly. In fact, it is a, fan, it, it is a far better approach to um, switching on resistive loads like hot water services. Anecdotally, um, and I think, I, look, there may be reasons behind this, but I find that actually it heats water even a bit faster than the previous approach. But I think in the previous approach, I was using five second uh, pulse or time intervals that then had a, essentially a one second sample time to sample the export to the grid or input from the grid. And so essentially in any one, in any, any one minute period, I was sort of, this device was off for eight to 10 seconds. So. Now I've increased that to, to 15 second intervals, so it's only off four times during, or roughly give or take four times during a 60 second period. Um, so the device is basically switched on most of the time. I'll show you some other features uh, that this enables, um, specifically about just having modes where I can just partially switch on the hot water service. And you might ask, well, why would you just want to do that? Well, I also have solar tubes here that heat our hot water system. And so uh, maybe during winter time or, or the, um, uh, the months just outside of winter time, I don't necessarily want to, I want to use those tubes as much as possible, uh, allowing me to export either what available energy I have to the grid or use it on the cars or whatever. So rather than overheat the water on a, on a sunny day during winter with electrical energy and then have the tubes do nothing, what I want to do is only maybe give a little bit of a boost uh, via the electrical system. So you'll see some of the modes that I've uh, set up in the device there. So uh, look, that's it in a nutshell. So say I will post the, uh, uh, the script for this. Um, the rest of it all is pretty standard. Again, I can export to hot water or export hot water in one of the cars or whatever, uh, but the device is working really well. And as I say, it's an absolute gem of an idea. Um, not that I came up with it, right? Solar diversion is nothing, uh, nothing new, but in terms of cost effectiveness and simplicity, it works really well. I'm going to pause the video now and then I'll come back and just show you some screenshots before shutting off. Hi there, back again. Um, so these are the standard screens and they're very familiar to the, the um, previous displays. Uh, this is the first mode, hot water service only, showing that I'm currently exporting just over one and a half kilowatts to the grid. And in this case, I'm diverting 37% um, um, of, um, or I'm switching on our hot water service, service roughly 37%, right? So you've got to, obviously, it depends on the element size in your hot water service. In our case, it's uh, between about 3.6 and 3.8 kilowatts. So uh, the mass works out to be, in this case, 37% and that's transferring through. And we may see an update. You'll see these are further apart now, once every 15 seconds, now 36% as the sun's going down. But that, uh, that's a perfect mode, and the system will, in this case, being um, mode one, always defaults to that when it's switched on. Again, this is switching uh, one of the cars on at the low charge level with the hot water service. The logic being here, as the power builds up, it will switch on the hot water service. Uh, initially 
and then once the threshold is reached for charging the car, the car will cut in. Obviously, then the hot water service will back off uh, to zero. And then if solar output continues to increase, then that will divert more into the hot water. If it declines, then obviously at some stage that will trigger an event to switch off the car charging after 20 minutes and obviously dump the rest into the hot water. Uh, that's um, the uh, high... Um, uh, charge level for the car and the hot water service uh, this is again a different vehicle at 8 amps at 10 amps at 13 amps um, charging levels um, and you can see at this stage the uh, there's no diversion through the car because the logic states that obviously we're not exporting 13 amps worth of power so it's still all going through the hot water service um, these are other modes that I set up. I won't go through those, but I've covered those in previous videos. Uh, these are for uh, vehicles only now, uh, so no hot water is involved at all. So again, uh, um, that replicates the modes that I had uh, previously on the uh, previous updates. Um, these are these modes now where I'm wanting to partially switch on or partially divert a controlled amount of energy to the hot water service. So at 12.5% there in my case, roughly that means I'm diverting half a kilowatt or 500 watts. Now, understandably, it would take a long time to heat the hot water service um, from, a, from a day's use at, uh, at half a kilowatt. But if I've got a particularly sunny day, uh, it's winter time, but the days are shorter, I'd try to maximise what I could get from our solar tubes and just have a little bit of energy coming in from uh, the electrical um, uh, solar panels. So that's when I would use these, um, um, these uh, cycles. Obviously, uh, half a kilowatt, and now 25% is, is roughly one kilowatt in this case. But um, yeah, I think these modes are actually really handy. Um, so essentially, the logic here is that if I'm actually exporting less than one kilowatt, then obviously it would divert everything to the hot water service until obviously it would max out at one kilowatt. So now if I'm exporting to the grid five kilowatts, I'd still only be um, uh, diverting one kilowatt to the hot water service. 50% uh, uh, in this case is um, about two kilowatts. Um, uh, and you can see that we're actually not actually exporting that much to the grid so we're limited at 1.4 at this particular time and uh, power measurement which is a mode that's always been there and essentially it does nothing other than show me how much power I'm diverting to the grid but there is no diversion there it's sometimes just a nice thing to have and there may be obviously seasons where you don't want to divert any energy um, in our case for example in summertime where the tubes do all the hot water heating and whatever, I don't really want to divert any um, electrical solar energy to the tubes, uh, to, to hot water um, heating. So we would use this mode and flip between this mode and then perhaps uh, the, uh, just the dedicated uh, EV charging modes for the vehicles. Uh, that's it in a nutshell. Uh, I hope you've enjoyed this series of videos. Um, I hope you get something out of it. I hope uh, hope uh, you get some value uh, and learnings from, from mine because I've sort of really enjoyed this exercise, I must say. And uh, just like to wish you uh, all the best with your projects. Thanks very much.